you take this definition of the perfect, most elite, badass version of you, these characteristics, and then you choose to embody those characteristics. What's up, guys? Welcome to Renegade Radio. I'm Jay Ferrugia, here to help you unleash your strongest self and become the most dominant, badass, elite version of you so that you can dominate all that you do and become the inspiration for everyone who needs you. Now, I got a question today that says, what would you give credit to that led you to being as successful as you are? Any specific action? You know, I wish it was as simple as one thing. That would be great. Um, but if I can narrow it down to just a few things, uh, here's what I would say. And, you know, we, for, firstly, we could define success uh, a multitude of ways. You know, success career-wise for me has me has meant, you know, having my own column in men's fitness, uh, starting one of the first underground warehouse hardcore-style gyms, uh, basically inventing group training, getting featured in every magazine, becoming the the, the chief training advisor for men's fitness, being on Arnold's uh, advisory board, being on the the on advisory board, being on the the um, uh, Live Strong advisory board, uh, you know, being one of the first people online to sell ebooks, programs, uh, having my book with Penguin published by Penguin back in 2007, working with a multitude of teams, um, you know, making X amount of money. All those things are great. There's also the success of reinventing myself, becoming someone completely different, um, you know, becoming a very confident person, a very well-connected person who was neither of those two things, who had no confidence, who didn't have a lot of connections or friendships uh, or meaningful relationships. And so as I always talk about, I think I think it should be your goal, you know, your purpose is to inspire other people like Kobe had talked about and to become the inspiration for them. That's why I always say become the inspiration, you know, define the person you want to become. What are the characteristics that that person would have? How do they look? How do they act? How do they carry themselves? What's their body language like? What's their physique like? What do they dress like? How do they talk? How do they enter a room? How do they make people feel? How do people respond to them, react to them? What do people say about them when they're not around? Uh, are they charismatic? Are they funny? Uh, all of these things, you take this uh, definition of the perfect, most elite badass version of you, these characteristics, and then you choose to embody those characteristics. You become the inspiration. You become the leader. You become the super connector. You become more confident. You rewrite all, all your false narratives. You reinvent yourself constantly, and you inspire other people. That's really, I believe, our purpose in life. And then, you know, that really is success. And you define success by how people you know, the, the, the people that you have in your life and how they talk about you when you're not there. We're all basically writing our own eulogy. Every single action, every decision you make, everything you do, uh, every conversation you make, you're writing your own eulogy every single day of the year. We get the chance to do that. You know, it's almost sometimes like a pie in the sky hypothetical thing where, oh, what would I, what would I want people to say about me when I'm gone? Well, you're writing it right now. You may not be literally physically writing it, but you're writing it through every single thing that you do, through every interaction that you have. So, you know, when you consider that, it 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 changes the way you operate from day to day. It changes some of the decisions you make. It changes maybe when you would choose to take the easy way versus the hard way. When you would choose uh, pleasure over purpose. When you would, uh, you know, succumb to your addictions and vices rather than being strong and making the tough decision and doing the hard thing, doing what makes you uncomfortable. So, you know, we can define success in a lot of different ways, but I really think if you had to sum it up, it would be what would people say about you when you're gone? So, you know, again, to narrow it down to a few things, I would say first and foremost, that the thing that comes to mind for me is your inner circle and your tribe. How you do life is impacted largely by who you do life with. One of the most important decisions you'll ever make in your life is who you choose to be in your inner circle, your tribe, who you surround yourself with. It's a critically important decision. Your chosen family has such an impact on you. They pick you up when you're down. They push you. They support you. They call you out 
on your bullshit. They tell you when it's time to check yourself before you wreck yourself. They help you level up. And because they're always on that path and evolving, you're always growing, getting better by osmosis just by hanging out with those people. So all that's super important. Your tribe. And you got to cut out the deadbeats, the negative Nancys, the naysayers, the it must be nice crowd, the complainers, the gossipers, the low energy people, the people who are not present, who are not interested in what you have to say, who have no passion for anything. Those people you got to get rid of. And you got to seek out great people. You got to curate and cultivate the inner circle of the kind of people that you want to be around. So, how do you do that? You got to pay to be in the room. They're not coming and knocking on your door and saying, hey, let's be friends and I'll help make your life better. It doesn't happen that way. You've got to pay to get in the room. You've got to go to events. You've got to travel. You have to do things like go up on, go on meetup.com. Go to every event you can. Go out more often. When you feel like staying home in your comfort zone, go out, socialize, push yourself. Uh, that's how you're going to meet those kind of people. You got to get in close proximity to those people who are living the way you want, thinking the way you want, operating the way you want. That's key. Now, just being in proximity to those people is not enough because if you have no, no social awareness, you don't understand social cues, you have no uh, people skills – you're not going to develop a relationship with those people. So that's really the next step. So that would be number two is you have to work tirelessly, relentlessly on developing a very high level of mastery when it comes to people people skills and social skills and just understanding psychology and human nature. That's going to be critically important. And if you can do that, uh, I mean, that's really a superpower. So You get around those people, now you build these meaningful relationships. It's all the how to win friends and influence people stuff, a book that everyone should read. And then you just develop an understanding and a mastery of body language, facial expressions, um, you know, understanding and recognizing those social cues like I talked about, uh, becoming a great listener. We have uh, classes, we have public speaking classes. You can take any kind of public speaking class, you can take an acting class, you can take an improv class. But the difference with improv is it teaches you listening skills because you have to listen to what your partner is saying on stage and only respond, react, answer them. Um, And that's why why improv is crucial. So I think everyone should take an improv class. I think it should be required. But if you become a great listener um, and and, and you, again, you know, recognize these social cues and improve your your social skills, that is going to make it much easier to connect with those people. Uh, the other reason that improv is great is it, it, it does a couple things for you. It takes you out of your comfort zone, which we always hear. You got to get out of your comfort zone. You got to get out of your comfort zone. Well, that's how you do it, right? It's a simple way. Everybody's comfort zone is, I don't want to be fucking talking on stage or I don't be talking in front of people. That's most people's number one fear. So with improv, you're doing that. You're developing listening skills. You're making a decision. Success in life comes down to how fast you can make decisions effective decisions. So when you start a scene with somebody, you have to decide, hey, are you the straight man or the funny man? Do you have a wacky accent? Do you have some kind of weird little thing that you're doing, some weird little habit or something? You know, whatever it is, you choose and you stick with that and you learn these things through improv, but those things are very important life lessons and skills. And then, you know, uh, Dale Carnegie said it, who knows how long ago, but it's 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 how to win friends and influence people one-on-one. To be interesting, you have to be interested. So if you don't find a, a one-on-one conversation with somebody absolutely exhilarating, something is wrong. You're not there. You're not fully present. You're not fully immersed in the situation and in the conversation. So you need to learn to develop insatiable curiosity. Even if you're not a master conversationalist, you're this is awkward to you. You're struggling with it. Just simply be fully present. Ask better questions, not even necessarily better questions, just more questions. Hey, tell me more about that. Hey, I'm interested in this. Can you tell me a story about that? And be excited, be passionate about their answers. Now, all of a sudden you're putting the spotlight on them. And Benjamin Disraeli said, if you talk to anybody about themselves, they were talk, they'll will talk to you for hours. Walter Payton, greatest running back of all time, said, if you are good at something, you will tell everyone. If you're great, they will tell you. 
So all of these things just meaning that you've got to put the other person in the spotlight. You've got to make them feel special. You've got to have that insatiable curiosity. You've got to be good at listening. And you've just got to have that volley back and forth of a conversation where all of a sudden you find yourself exhilarated and fascinated with this person. Even if they're telling you about how paint dries, you get yourself to that point where you can find it fascinating. You can make that other person really interesting and feel them feel, make them feel like the superstar. And then just be valuable to people, right? People always want to know about how to build a better body. So if you have a little bit of a knowledge about health and fitness, that's always going to be valuable to people. People always want to learn how to make more money, how to build a business. So if you know a little bit about these things or a lot about these things, you're going to be very valuable to people. And then people always want to improve their relationships slash get laid if you're single. Uh, Know a little bit or a lot about those subjects, you're going to be very valuable to people. So you study a decent amount about those three subjects, which are also three economy-proof desires. People always want to build a better body no matter what happens to the economy. They always want to have better relationships slash get more laid, have better, get, get more laid, get laid more or have better sex slash increase their bank account no matter what. So those are economy-proof desires. And again, if you know a little bit or a lot about those things, you become very valuable to people. You can always offer them something. Now, we get great at building relationships. That's the fourth thing is you become the super connector because you have this Rolodex or black book of all these amazing contacts and you're just parceling out goodwill. Hey, man, my buddy Jack can can hook you up with this. Oh, I know somebody who's great at this. Hey, you should talk to this person. Now you become really invaluable. And then the other thing I would say is you have to do whatever you can Everything, anything, all the things on a daily basis to maximize your own self-confidence. And how do you do that? Simply, you maximize your own self-confidence, your own self-confidence by keeping promises that you make to yourself, right? Which could be something as simple as, hey, I'm not going to drink anymore, or I'm not going to drink during the week anymore, or I'm just not going to drink more than three drinks a night. Whatever rules you have, whatever promises you've made, hey, I'm going to work out three days a week. You keep those promises yourself so you don't skip one of those workouts and do two. You say, I'm only going to have a cheat meal or a cheat day on Saturday so you don't have your cheat day on Thursday. You know, you keep simple promises to yourself that it almost sounds silly, but but it stacks up and it adds up after a while. Keeping those promises, doing the hard things, getting up early, going to bed early, going to bed at the same time, All these things seem trivial, they seem easy, they're simple, but you do them. You stick to your diet, eat the same foods, you get the workouts in, you read 10 pages a day, you get your 10,000 steps in, you have your challenging conversations, you push yourself out of your comfort zone, maybe you take a cold shower each day, whatever it is, you do these things and the more you can check that green X every day on the calendar, the more you keep those promises to yourself, the more it adds up and then you feel exponentially better. You almost become a different person with how much more confidence you have. And then the other ways to to you know improve your confidence are again saying no to your temptations and your vices and resisting the urge to do those things to take the easy way to to choose hard over easy, to choose pleasure over purpose, but also by delaying gratification, um, getting in great shape, right? You have way more confidence when you feel better and you look better. So if you train, if you eat right, if you get enough sleep and you're proud of your body, you're proud of how you look, of how you feel, of the things that you've done, when you have more pride in all of that, you're going to operate at a higher level and you're going to have more confidence and that radiates off you and then that attracts people. People who have no confidence repel people. Generally, you don't like being around someone who has low confidence. They're just not that enjoyable to be around. But if you have high levels of confidence, you attract people to you. You warm up the room and people are just, you know, uh, just clamoring to be near you. So it is a game changer. And, you know, again, just doing things other people won't do. And that's the most important thing that every day we wake up with that in mind. What can I do? What are all the actions? What are all the steps I could take to build my confidence, improve my confidence? And, and yet it never stops, right? If you stop working out, you're going to get smaller. If you stop eating right, you're going to get fatter. Uh, if you stop working on your business, you're going to go broke. Same thing happens with confidence. You have to work on it every single day. You don't get to a level where you're just there 
and it's good. If you don't do all the things, your confidence will slowly start to come down. You'll chip away at your self-esteem by breaking those promises, by not doing those things. You're never at the level where you can be on cruise control and just coast. you got to do those things repeatedly every single day until the day you die. And we're never at a high enough level of confidence, right? Anyone you can think of, The Rock, LeBron James, whoever it might be, uh, Jay-Z, Eminem, they would all say, yes, I'd like to have more confidence than I do now. No one ever has enough. It's a superpower. You could change the world and change everyone around you if you have done all the things that are necessary for you to improve your confidence and to take your confidence to the highest level. So that's what I would say. You wake up every morning. That's your purpose. Become the most confident person that you can become. Then you become the inspiration for everyone around you who needs that, who needs you to light that path for them, show them a way, show them the way, show them what's possible, and so that they can become more confident and take all the steps that you took. That's a huge responsibility. But when you choose that responsibility, you automatically make your life better. And that's all I got for today, guys. Thanks so much for listening. Thanks so much for sharing the show. If you could comment, like, subscribe, share, uh, leave reviews, all that would be greatly appreciated. I'm Audi 5000. Peace.